Hello there, internet dwellers. Welcome back to another video. Today, we have an exciting video for you because Darian Quilloy, aka the creator of Vita Canis, uploaded the first episode of season two. In my last live stream, we caught up on the world of Vita Canis, and I was reminded why it blew me away when I first watched it. The world building in this series is insane. The amount of detail in the biology of these creatures alone is something to admire. It's absolutely incredible the amount of thought that goes into this series. So I'm looking forward to, uh, in the last episode i believe they got to some kind of facility where they were keeping these singularities and it kind of ended there we don't know what happened after that so maybe this would we'll touch upon that or maybe do a little time skip but if you're excited guys please go and subscribe to darian quilloy go like the original video and if you're a fan of mine and you like this reaction then consider liking the video and subscribing also because it truly helps my channel thank you so much for the support as usual guys we're just going to jump straight into this it's called vita canis new beginning uh, there's nothing in the description except the co uh, coffee and uh, other, other uh, well there's uh, the cast here as well which is pretty cool but uh, no further lore or context for the video needed so here we go this video talks about and shows imagery of graphic content like flashing lights, gore, violence, death. Viewer discretion is advised. I love it. I love it when you talk dirty to me. I don't know what that, why I just said that. <clears throat> I apologize. Never saying that again. Something has happened within the restricted zone where a large group of cultists have been apprehended. Several teams of military personnel. Ah, okay. So this, the the people that was in charge of the charge of the this facility, they were cultists who were doing all that. And I have no idea how cultists managed to get their hands on five singularities. Maybe they were being brainwashed by these Carnis, Vita Carnis. Military veteran Simon Vanguard found to be the head of the secret organization. Simon Simon was arrested during the raid of Lanborough Mall where he was found leading high-ranking court members in a ritualistic sacrifice. Custody of Simon was handed over to police by Carcass, where he will face trial for his crimes. Personnel have arrested some high-ranking okay. cultists and have unmasked their identities to the public. Shockingly, several of these members are well-renowned politicians and high-ranking members of multiple governments across... Who would have thought? Have Government doing weird ritualistic things? High-ranking people doing ritualistic things? I would never have guessed that. Released, ...providing sufficient proof of the atrocities that were being committed. Some of these crimes include murder, kidnapping, wow. torture, ritual sacrifice, and the list goes on. The members are found guilty of deliberately providing false information to the public in an attempt to cause harm. The new trial okay. company has been found to have very significant ties with cultist activities. Ah, uh, okay, so th this was the flavor enhancer, if you remember, guys, and I'm... Um, my theory was that they had some kind of spore in there that would lead people to then go to hosts, I think they were called, and just expose their organs and get killed. And has been shut down. All new trier products have been deemed hazardous for consumption. Shit. farms are facing pressure to shut down. Public unrest grows as the new trier cult case brings more crimes that were hidden away to light. The people are outraged by wow. how little was actually being done. They okay. demand that something be done to handle the current species. We're still on the run. Who are these guys? Are these just mimics on the run? That is disgusting. Right here in the streets, as protests begin to turn. Our leaders were plotting against us. Secret world order. Of course, it's a triangle. What happens now? I love the sound design, by the way. The way it's building up, really good. So that's a singularity right there. We st we don't know what. Okay. Welcome. The Magister's Wonder Show. I am the Magister. Hello. And get ready to explore all of the world's wonders. Sounds good, man. Let's go. Today, we are learning about the circle of life. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. Well, I wanted to learn about that. Dr. Marshall Tredos, head director and do doctor of Carcass, progress report, Virum Carnis. 1991. Okay. Test report number four. Oh, wow. We still know very little about the nature of the entities. There are seven singularities in total. Oh, okay. I thought there were only five. Each singularity is roughly one meter in diameter. Uh -huh. They are made of an unknown material, although it looks and feels very similar to glass. Like a marble. It looks like a marble. We are unable to sample it in fear of causing potential damage. Mm -hmm. The material <clears throat> is very dark in color. 
but has red shimmers of light swirling inside. Yeah. There are some hints of other colors present, but is mostly dominated by the red. Okay. Each oh, that's entity cool. hovers above the ground in a stationary position. Although they can be moved with relative ease. Is it like conscious? Is it like aware of itself? Our equipment can detect some subtle pulses of energy. Okay. In rhythmic but random patterns. Okay. And we, you need to remember that the cruel, or whatever comes from the cruel, which is the, the beginning roots of Vita Canis, they attract to, like, electronic waves, like satellite dishes and, like, radio waves and stuff like that, like, trimmings like radio waves. So this singularity is some kind of, like, electromagnetic thing, and I'm guessing they're all moving towards the singularities, perhaps? Or at least some are. The mimics seem to just be on their own journey. Okay, it's doing seven. It's doing seven each time. I was we like, don't know what they are. Hmm. We don't know if it is breathing or communicating. We don't even truly know if they are even organic. Okay. This is nothing new, just confirming what we already know. It's crazy as well, because where did the singularity come from? Because everything else is kind of from the cruel, which is, as I say, org organic. And this singularity doesn't seem organic at all. It seems like an energy almost. Our first experiments didn't give any interesting leads. The most we got was some interference with electronics. Okay. Especially when there is more than one kept close together. Uh, but okay. the experiment we conducted showed extremely significant results. The experiment played out like this. In test chamber one, oh, no. a live cow was released into the chamber with B1 for an extended period. Mm -hmm. They were left together Chilling. for Look at four it. hours. The test showed minimal results from the entity. And, and the, cow didn't even, the cow didn't even crap once. That's amazing. Stress from the cow. Next, the body of a cow was put into the chamber with V1 for 24 hours. Okay. The Just results one. were extraordinary. Oh my god. It turned it into cruel. A corpse was turned into cruel. And that was done by a singularity. So was the start of Vita Canis, where, okay, if, it, if the start of Vita Canis came from dead bodies, it was 1931, I believe, when it first, like, came about. I don't know if there was any, like, major war events, because World War I ended by then, and World War II hadn't started yet. But if the cruel is made from the singularity turning it into cruel, then that's... So these are made of dead things? Five hours after the whole body had been ingested, concentrations of crawl rapidly grew from several points from within the chamber. Wow. Okay. What this could mean, it rewrites everything we knew about the Vita Carnis species. Okay. Jeez, okay. So that singularity technically should be at the top there and that cruel should be at the bottom. Oh good lord, what's going on there? Is that elephant dying? First, a young larva hatches from within its egg. Uh -huh. It will roam around and find food to help it grow and grow. Once they are big enough, they transform into a pupa. And after some more time, they transform into an adult beetle. Nice. The adult beetle will go out into the world in search of food. Search of food, okay. Dr. Rhodes Ceres, is that how you say that? Cruel specialist, head cultivator, progress report. Scandir Canis. Okay, Audio so log. Progress report for crawl samples. Uh -huh. Cultivation has been successful. So far, we grew them with three specific environmental factors. One is our control group, two with access to additional nutrition sources, and three with exposure to radio signals. Okay. They love radio signals.
Group 1 grew on par with standard crawl samples. No distinct abnormalities. Okay. Group 2 grew at a faster pace than the control group, as expected. It was consuming... No distinct abnormalities. Okay. It was consuming the things and turning them into... Oh my goodness. Group 3 grew against its normal pattern, weaving its way toward the radio. Once the device was claimed, it switched to usual growth patterns. Interesting. So it ignores like all kind of biological or like whatever stuff when there's like a radio or like some kind of wave happening. They go for that one first. That's interesting. Again, no distinct abnormalities. Okay. In conclusion, the samples that were grown in V1's test chamber don't seem to differ from others grown from other sources. Still, we will continue with more factors and further groups, just in case. There have been some developments in the propagation group. Okay. V1 samples have seemingly been able to produce nodules at a slightly quicker rate than wild samples. Control groups show that V1 samples begin node development a few days faster. More time will be needed to say for sure. As for the nodes themselves, there aren't any distinct abnormalities. Okay, so that documentary that's also being played alongside this about the life cycle, saying how it's like a larvae, then it turns into a whatever, then it turns into a beetle and it keeps searching for food, is similar to what the crawl is doing here. It, it hunts for like a source of food and grows quicker depending We've on what is fed. We've successfully hatched a dozen Carnish juveniles, several trimmings, two meat snakes, Ooh. and even one mimic. Oh my, screw that, we'll get out of there. We'll be sending them to the enclosures after everyone's reports get sent out. Okay. End lock. Okay, look, yeah, it's showing like- And then is ground into a fine mint and is now ready for the garden. What is that? That's not cruel, is it? Dr. Fawn Penitro, uh, trimming specialist. Here we go, trimmings, the cute little guys. Audio log. Progress report for trimming colony. Significant progress in learning the social patterns of a group of trimmings we have been keeping together. A new batch of juveniles were added to the main colony at the beginning of the new progress report. They were accepted into the community immediately. No conflict or rejection observed. Okay. They did provide the circumstances to document more of their interactions. They're social creatures, guys. They need that social Trimmings interaction. Trimmings communicate through a series of vocal cues. Okay. Colony members meeting the new batch with squeaks and squeals. Yeah, they're talking to each other. They also are not afraid to show us when they are upset. Trimmings also use some physical displays as well. It's like Happy Meat Farm, isn't it, this is? For example, trimmings do a chewing or chatter motion with their mouths when they are happy or interested in something. It loves football. That's good. The experiment that we yeah. performed was to explore the extent of their communication skills. Aww. The test went like this. I love practical effects, guys. I absolutely love it. I just came back from watching Alien Romulus, and I've got to say, practical effects need to come back. We took one of the trimmings and had them in place in a modified enclosure. A speaker would play two separate audio cues. A positive cue would play followed by a treat. Okay. And a negative cue, followed by a small spray of cold water. No! We did several rounds of both audio cues to condition the trimming's response. So you're doing like, what? what's that thing called? With the stick or whatever it's called? Yes, yeah, chewing. It loves it. <laughs> Wow, it's getting super aggressive towards the freaking feeder. What am I thinking of? Pat, Patlov, Pat, Patlov, Pavlov. Yeah, Pavlov's dog. That's that's what this is doing. It's conditioning this thing to certain sounds. Oh no! I can't believe it. Oh, leave that poor trimming alone. Oh, so it reacted even before it was sprayed. And that's what it's doing. It's con why are they? Why? 
Why did it? Why they? Did they need to do this? Oh. Oh, that's actually really sad. What the, the fuck? Was released back to its colony. Good. Fucking and give it some. Give it a warm bath and some treats. You disgusting pig. And after a few hours, we tested how much the trimmings communicated. Okay. Another speaker was placed near the colony's enclosure, where we played the same audio cues. No. So they shall up. It is incredible. To see I think, what do you mean? Like, it's just, you're conditioning it. I've, I believe this is probably the same. I mean, it's... It, I guess it's saying that it's smart enough to know that sound means good, that sound means bad. So there's some kind of how layered cognitive, the can be. yeah. Although we tried something a bit bizarre. What did you do to these poor trimmings? I swear to God, I will burn this place down. We found out that a wild colony had settled around the facility recently. Okay, so they're communicating outside. It, it was strange. How so? What we did. What did you do? Just just say it. It was a long shot. We set up a radio device near the wild colony and near ours. And you played the sounds? We linked both devices up and played the cues. No way. That is really, really not good. That is really not good. And, uh, and I'll tell you why afterwards. There's many dangers out there. And that's why they're showing ants, the really. Wild. Okay. There are many predators that would love to have beetles for a snack. And unfortunately, not all beetles make it. Yes, it is sad, but that's how the circle of life works. But look, one of the beetles has laid eggs. And once the beetle's eggs hatch, the beautiful cycle starts again. Mm, and life can... Did, was that, did that just show... Hang on. Oh, okay. I thought it showed, um... Like and the Vita Carnage. <laughs> okay. There we go. So we're not going to learn about the mimics in this one. Because I, I imagine, like, the tests that they're going to do on mimics... It seems like they're going through each testing ground of like each little species of this cruel or Vita Canis. Okay, let's see if there's like any story at the end here. Usually there was like a. Okay, never mind. These are all coffee members. Links in the description, nice. That was good. Okay, so just before more to come okay what this means in particular the trimmings and but the trimmings you got to remember come from the cruel but the trimmings are linked together they're hive minded which means that you do something to one of them everyone else remembers and that's not good because if they truly are all linked like trimmings and mimics and everything else because they all come from the same thing that means that you're gonna have vengeful mimics vengeful hosts vengeful monoliths if you keep experimenting on these things they are gonna take revenge and kill humanity off because they were isolated from the rest of these wild trimmings and they responded exactly the same way that the trimmings did who were isolated. You need to start treating these trimmings better. That was a very strong start to a, what is going to be a fantastic season two. So guys, if you did enjoy, go check out Vita Carnis. Uh, go check out Darian Quilloy. Okay, but look, there, so there's a singularity. And then look, there's diagrams which show like little bits of like what's inside these things. It's so well detailed. It's awesome. The world building is absolutely insane. But there we go, guys. That was the newest video of Vita Canis. Once again, go subscribe to Darren Quilloy. Go like the video for yourself. Just really like it's definitely top five uh, analog horrors in my in my books for sure. If you enjoyed my reaction, why not leave a like rating, subscribe, all that good stuff. This is the majority of my content, analog horrors, spooky games here and there. Thank you for watching. Thank you for the support as always, guys. And I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.